Welcome to this special edition of the Chief AI Officer podcast with Sanjay Puri, the global stage where enterprise leaders decode the real transformation happening inside AI. Today, we bring you a curated set of insights from some of the sharpest minds in technology, governance, and enterprise leadership. We are living through one of the most confusing and consequential moments in enterprise AI history, where Bolt wants agents, every vendor claims autonomy, and every roadmap promises transformation. And yet, behind closed doors, most chief AI officers will admit the same thing. Very little of this is actually real, yet. So what is real experimentation? The uncertainty? The sense that we are all standing inside a live science fair, testing ideas that may not survive six months, but could reshape organizations for decades. Most of the peers I speak with, they really don't have any autonomous agents running, doing anything real, but we're all doing the same thing. We're experimenting. These technologies, I mentioned before, A to A, Model Context Protocol, they're all, they're new to the scene. Are they going to be here six months from now? Are they secure? Can they scale? You know, can someone hijack them? This honesty is refreshing and rare. Despite the hype, most organizations are not deploying fully autonomous agents in production. They are probing the edges, testing frameworks, stress testing assumptions, and asking uncomfortable questions about security, identity, and durability. But in a quiet but important shift, some leaders are allowing themselves to experiment without immediate ROI, something enterprises almost never do. These are all things we're all trying to figure out. So what I told my team was, let's not worry about, usually we worry about implementing something. We very rarely do things just to do things and say, look, we have a, we have a cool proof of concept that we do nothing with. We don't do that. In this case, what I told the team was, do it in this case. Because sometimes the value isn't in the outcome, it's in learning what breaks. We're enabling a salesperson who had to usually wait in the queue for a CAD engineer to be available to have that conversation and do that analysis. We're now taking that knowledge and putting it right in the hands of the salesperson through Agentic AI. So they've almost got like a CAD engineer junior assistant right next to them. This is where agentic AI begins to matter, not as autonomy theater, but as capability redistribution. Agents shine when they compress wait times, unlock bottlenecks, and place expert knowledge closer to the moment of decision, not by replacing humans, but by repositioning them. I believe in our org charts. Yeah, we're going to start to see agents show up in the org chart, right? So Mark Kermish might be the CTO, but Mark Kermish has five or six AI assistants that report to him. And those assistants have a certain level of identity and access management across the organization. We provision access just like we would a human to the agent. This is a profound shift in mental models. Agents are no longer applications. They are actors with scoped authority, defined responsibilities, and governed access. And once you accept that, new questions emerge. Who supervises them? Who audits them? And who is accountable for their actions? Even all the way down to you know, recent grads, I would expect them to potentially have research agents that they may be able to deploy to help them drive automation and accelerate their onboarding. In this future, productivity doesn't scale by hiring faster. It scales by pairing humans with intelligent collaborators from day one. You told CIO.com that you feel like we are in a big science fair with Gen AI and eight, eight out of 10 are failing. You know, that's uh, refreshingly honest in a landscape where everyone claims uh, success. What separates the two experiments that succeed from the eight that don't? A lot of use cases are developed that are not relevant to AI. 
right? There may be more of an analytics use case, or maybe it's really more of a machine learning use case where you don't need the agentic aspect of AI, you just need more of an algorithmic application. And, you know, so I think making sure that the use case matches the capability of what artificial intelligence in today's terms can do. I think the second is, you know, not having good defined KPIs tied to that use case. This is the uncomfortable truth. Many agentic AI initiatives fail not because the technology is weak, but because the problem framing is wrong. If you don't know whether you're optimizing for cost, speed, quality, or in sourcing, you won't know if the agent is succeeding. You know, just that simple agent could take hundreds of hours to get it to write a PR release in the voice of Pro Labs with the right context so it doesn't need a lot of human intervention. And so putting KPIs, I think, is, is really important. And so there are places, like I think we are de uh, deploying agents in prior auth, right? Which is a great example of, it's a little bit more than just routing. So uh, what that means is like a clinician is taking their notes and they're going to spend so much time putting that in a format that now you need to submit for authorization from the payer. Um, that's a great place for an agentic system framework to come in because uh, you're buying the clinician's time back to actually do the job that they're here to do, which is serve the patients. Agentic AI is not inherently unsafe, but it is unforgiving. In regulated and high stakes environments, success demands rigor, patience, and humility. They sat down and cracked the workflow over months. They didn't do this in isolation. They brought the clinicians, the nurses, tested it. They shadowed it for like six months. So that system didn't do anything. It just compared what the human did. And so they, they have a really good playbook that they did. It took them two years to get this out. So I think they are now, and the, 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 they got mortality down by 17%. That's not hype. That's earned credibility. Agentic AI can operate in high-risk settings, but only when workflows are deeply understood. Humans remain in the loop and evidence leads the way. For example, we're rolling out ERP and it's a cloud ERP and it's got a suite of AI products embedded in it. And it's a journey, so I could Either present is like, hey, we are rolling out e ERP with AI, or I could start with, we're solving business problems to improve our DSOs, to improve our cash collections, and this is a tool that we do it, and this is a tool we believe is gonna get us there faster. The most successful chief AI officers don't lead with technology. They lead with outcomes and let AI earn its place as a means, not a headline. This distinction determines whether AI is perceived as a cost center or a gross engine. So all the opportunities are assessed for some of those benchmarks that are out there. It has to be, in a way, cash positive. It has to be compliant and meets the regulatory and legal standards. Agentic AI raises the stakes for governance, not lowers them. From technical guardrails to policy alignment, from LLM verification to deterministic fallbacks, governance is now a continuous system, not a one-time review. We may not leave some of those repeat things into generative AI anymore. We may just have pre-generated answers, which actually essentially a caching of sorts. The future isn't purely generative. It's hybrid, intentional, and cost-aware. We had already come up with this notion of these AI um, entities, let's call them that, not use the word agent for a second, that would provide answers to questions, make decisions, and then take action. Those are the three areas. That simple definition cuts through the noise. Agentic AI isn't about autonomy for its own sake. It's about systems that can reason, decide, and act responsibly securely and in service of human goals. We are still early. Most experiments will fail. 
Some agents will never leave the lab. But the leaders who take the time to experiment honestly, govern rigorously, and align AI with real business value will build organizations where humans and intelligence systems work side by side. Thank you for joining us on the Chief AI Officer Connect podcast journey. We value your time. Please feel free to leave a comment, share with someone you think would enjoy these insights, and catch us every Tuesday with a brand new episode right here on the Chief AI Officer Connect podcast.